Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro, and today I wanted to revisit a topic that we just looked at last week with view router page transition animations. And I wanted to do that for two reasons. First, there was something that kind of screwed up. I wanted to address really quickly, only like in a matter of a minute. And then also I wanted to introduce a concept of, and if this isn't new to CSS, it's called the cubic Bezier property. And when used with router transition page animations, it creates for a really cool effect and it allows you to very easily control the flow of the animation between the pages all right so the first thing I want you to take a look at uh, is because we're, I'm not gonna start from scratch like I usually do in most tutorials this is just a lazy Sunday very quick video I decided to do um, I want you I, I basically uploaded the project to um, github added it here you can just clone this repo I'll add it in the description of this YouTube video and then that way you'll be right where we were at the very end of last week's tutorial all right, so <clears throat> we'll go ahead and you know, do what you need to do to get up to this point or just rewatch that tutorial. And once you're at that stage, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and um, just go ahead in the terminal and run yarn serve. And this is what it currently looks like. So this is what we did last week. These are the page transition animations, as you can see, you know, the URL changes and everything, but we still have a nice sleek animation and a transition between the pages. Now this is just straight up linear animation here. All right, so just to look at the code real quick, just to show you what's going on here is um, first in the template, we simply have this transition name equals, let me make this larger for us all to see. Is just, we have, now I'll just close this out. We have the transition name, router anim, and that's just a prefix for the CSS class. And then down here, we have router anim. There's that name, interactive. It's just defining an animation with a, a coming, it's an animation name called coming, and then a one second duration. Same thing with a, the router anim leave active state, which is going. And then here's our two animations. Very basic stuff. It's just a transform on translate X, negative 50 pixels, very simple. All right, so we're first going to address that issue that I mentioned before. Um, an individual commented on that tutorial and said, hey, you don't need to add position fixed here to this page class, which is in reference to, um, it's in the other view here. Let's see, yeah, right here. In order to get those smooth transition, or page transitions, all you have to do, and I forgot about, I've, I've used it before, but I completely forgot about when doing that tutorial. We just simply add mode, equals out hyphen in. There's also a mode of in out, but more often than not, you're gonna use out in. You can, you can experiment with those two. Second, we can now remove these two properties. And so if I save it, <clears throat> sorry, did I just really open up my email client by accident? Yeah, I did, one second. All right, so now if we click between these pages, we'll see that they now still work. Oh, and there's a little bit of a delay because I forgot to remove that delay, which is right here. All right, so now we save, and it now works without having to make that a position fixed element. All right, so that's just the first thing. That's not really what this tutorial is about though. This is about the cubic Bezier function and animation. Again, it's not new, but when we, I know there's a lot of people who don't really know about it, um, but when used in conjunction with our paid transition animations, it's uh, really cool. And it takes something that's simple that we currently have and just adds a little bit extra of an element to it. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to, to, to actually integrate the cubic Bezier animation. Uh, we just simply have to add one property. And so we're gonna add it on the router anim leave active class. All we have to do is put animation hyphen timing hyphen function property. And we're gonna specify cubic and then Bezier. And then we specify four different values here that are comma separated within this function. So we're just gonna add for now 0 0.8, negative 0.49, We'll put 0.36 and one. Now, if you're confused about what these values are, especially if you've never seen them, don't worry. Let's just go ahead and save this real quick. And now I want you to look at the animation when 
this one is leaving because we only need, only at, at this point added it to the leave class or the leave state rather. So watch what happens when it leaves. Instead of just going to the left, it's gonna come out a little bit and then go back in. Notice that? Now, it's not very noticeable based on a current animation because it doesn't move much. So I wanna make some really quick uh, adjustments. And in, in fact, I'm not even gonna make adjustments, I'm just gonna paste over some of this stuff with the written version of this tutorial. And so just to show you what I'm talking about, uh, in the description, the first link will be the written version of this tutorial. If you scroll down right around here in the page, you'll see this part right here. This is everything that I want you to copy and paste in between the style section of the view component. Now, not much is changing here. I'm simply uh, adding two properties to the page class. I'm adding padding to the nav. Uh, I've added a background color um, to you know one of the elements. Uh, yeah, the page elements right there. Um, so not much is actually changing here, but I don't want to sit there and like just waste all this time in this tutorial to do this because all I want to do with this by pasting this in is to make it a little bit more obvious, the effect. We're also changed. I only changed the translate X to Y and made it 300 pixels. So uh, coming down back to our example, now you can see we're going to be showing an example that really will accentuate or demonstrate what Cubic Bezier does. So isn't that cool? So it's just taking a default animation that's just going from, you know, X to Y, and it's allowing you to control the curve of the animation. So <clears throat> now I can talk about, all right, how do we actually control those values and, you know, get an idea of what exactly is happening with the cube, cubic Bezier function? Well, there's a really handy, nifty website out there and it is at cubicbezier.com. So let's go ahead and visit that real quick. So right here. So this is cubicbezier.com, and what this allows you to do is on the left, we can adjust and manipulate, we can even go down uh, the beginning and end point of basically an X, Y coordinate. Um, and you are able to really adjust this line and then you can hit go and the bottom one is just a standard animation without any type of bezier applied to it and this one at the top is how the animation will appear or flow uh, with this property added so you can adjust the duration if you want and so let's say we like this one. Well, we can click save right here, and just copy the four values, and then we'll go back to our code. All right, so as you can see, when we pasted this in, I added a timing function for the top and bottom, and they're both slightly different. But let's just add the, the leave function. Let's, let's just paste that in the leave function right there. Now watch what happens when it leaves. Now, of course, you could go real crazy with this, and I wouldn't suggest making or using some type of really elaborate type of uh, page transition animation or, or cubic bezier uh, properties, kind of like I have here. It's a little bit too jerky, but again, this is just to demonstrate how useful this is. And by the way, if you're kind of curious about how this is kind of not overlapping, there's uh, another real cool trick is I, uh, where is it at? Overflow hidden, that's another property that was added when we pasted um, that I didn't describe to the app container. So overflow hidden will make it so that any content that's coming in and animating in from a different page or, or a route, um, it, it, it won't extend beyond your container if you have a UI that kind of has a defined container like this. All right, so let me just go back real quick. I don't really actually like those properties. But for an actual page transition animation, this is pretty cool. And of course you can make it come in from the left or the right. But yeah, so that is basically how it all works out. Um, so hopefully, you know, uh, you're able to, to follow that first tutorial and then take away something extra from this one. This is kind of just a quick, you know, again, Sunday video. So I just to keep you up to date with what's going on with my end in terms of Corsetro, 
Uh, I have a new course that's gonna be releasing very soon. It actually uses the view as well as this animation uh, project, but it's gonna be so much more than those two things. All right, so look on that, look out for that very soon and more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.